morning. Good morning. Pamela? Yes? Um, I need to send you a letter and do I, I send it to Paul Brockman also to resign? So it's to Paul directly and you can um, okay, copy. I'll copy you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll do that in the next couple of days. I have to, I had to register to vote here. Uh, we have a two and a half override coming up. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So the schools are in trouble as usual. Yeah. Everybody's got that. Yes. I have to go vote for the mm -hmm. override. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, Elise. Hi. So um, I have a 115 commitment, so I've got to bounce out right at one o'clock. All right. Okay. Just well, to let you know. Yeah. Hi, everybody. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> it's great to stay up late. Good morning, good morning to you. <laughs> you got a great voice. I know. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've seen you in a number of productions. Oh. At the community theater. Yeah. 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 It's my happy place. <laughs> it's nice. Thanks. Even with the purple hair, you recognize me. Yeah. <laughs> They're putting wigs on me now uh -oh. because of the purple hair. Oh. <laughs> Those are excellent productions. The VLO. We used to yeah. go every year when my children were little. Somehow we've gotten out of the habit. We'll have to get back uh, in the habit again. Or doing the Mikado, but it takes place in Scotland. Oh. We're doing oh. a different version. Okay. Yeah, it should be fun. The Mikado. Hi, Tim Nelson. Good morning. I don't usually mm -hmm. see you at these meetings. I know. <laughs> How you doing? Nice. Well, we got a good group here. Yes. Okay, the dog going to sleep. Good. Hmm. Here. Come over here. So, Myra, you um, you have a quorum here if you'd like to get started. Um, Elise, Marty, and Cody are here. Um, I have not oh, seen Saren or Ian or Jim yet. Ooh. And you're muted, so you're... So, Myra, we can't hear you. You're okay. <laughs> Do you know if Rob Mora is coming, Pamela? Uh, I did send him an invite. Fine. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I couldn't join from my iPad, so mm -hmm. I'm joining from iPhone, which is very limited with the vision. <laughs> so...
Sarens, we haven't started yet. We're, um, well, Myra's unmuted. Yeah. Hmm. So Myra, your computer says that you're unmuted, but okay. She's going to call in. So Myra, I, while you're um, trying to get connected, I think what I'll do is go ahead and read the legal language and do the roll call, right? Okay. So the Disability Access Advisory Committee is meeting virtually. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public may adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological uh, means. So I'll do the roll call. Um, Marty Smith. Here. Okay. Cody Rooney. So Cody, you're you're muted too. Uh, Elise Link here. All right, Saren Darren here. Okay, and uh, Myra Ross is here, um, and she's trying to connect. So Cody, if you can unmute and just say that you're here, Thank that you. would be great. all right. Great. Thank you. All right, so Myra, are you at least able to hear us? Okay, so um, I will maybe proceed. Um, so we've done the roll call. The first order of business I would like would be for the members to um, approve the minutes for April and March if you've had an opportunity to review them, if someone would make a motion to do so. So moved. All right, and a second. I second it. Thank you. So um, having had a motion um, and a second, um, all in favor of approving the minutes for March and April, um, uh, please signify by saying aye when I call your name. So Marty? Aye. Elise? Aye. Saren? Aye. Cody? 
Aye. Okay. And Marty, ha um, um, Myra has uh, disappeared for a minute, so she might be trying to reconnect, but with uh, four eyes, the motion has passed. Um, Jim, uh, I don't see him among the participants, but he had an announcement which I shared with the group, which was um, changes that were made to section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. Um, and those changes, there are quite a lot of them were um, shared with you. I don't know if anyone has any additional questions or comments that they wanna make about um, those changes to 504. Okay, all right. All right, so hearing none, we're going to then move on. So uh, the first order of new business is um, we've asked Chief uh, Tim Nelson to join us. Um, uh, Saren had some questions regarding uh, re emergency response protocol. So Saren, would you like to begin with your questions for the chief? Well, um... I have to take back, um, try to remember things. And uh, the problem was in one of the big snowstorms, my road was not plowed or cleared or anything. And then uh, I had family members help me and neighbors opening my driveway, but then it was impossible for the personal care attendants to reach my home. So um, I did not know it. I thought it might be uh, helpful if there is a place where people fa are finding themselves in my situation to contact on weekends after business hours. So you're saying uh, that... Uh... Well, because 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 the snow 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 snowstorm, uh, you couldn't couldn't get a, get out of your your home or something like that. Yes. And well, that's that's so, sort of a D D D P W thing. You know, they they prior prioritize the you know streets in in town, and and they do and they do do a good job. Right. So you know, some some someone is going to be first, someone is going to be last. You know, so that's and that's and that and that's just just a reality. But right. term, I have term... lived. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have lived in this uh, environment for many, many, many years, uh, so I know the situation. But in case uh, it, it is after the snow has fallen, you know, and on the ground, and it's impossible to somebody to enter your home, and if you need care to get in and out of your bed then there should be a contact way to call a number and well, which i did you know because i happen to have guilford's personal uh cell number so i called him but i thought that was really bad to call somebody uh, on a weekend well, the thing is, if 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 it's if you believe it's some type 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 of emergency, you star start off by dial, dialing nine nine one one, you know, for for that. Or if if the case case like uh, as as you described, where you know you're kind of kind of uh, plow plowed in and that and that type 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 of thing, you can call the business line in at at dis at dis 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 dispatch. It's two five nine three zero eight zero. And but, and ex mm -hmm. and you you can explain 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 the uh, situation and they'll and they'll take steps to allevi alleviate it. Mm -hmm. But I think that number does not work on weekends. Yes, right? it does. It it oh, works twenty four. It's it's a twenty four seven um, 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 number. This is Myra. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, I finally got here. I can't believe whatever just happened and made no sense. Anyway, um, if if um, if that's the way to do it, I think it's great. Is there a way to post that number somewhere so that if yes. people have an emergency um, that they, I mean, you don't want it to be used wholesale, but maybe on a disability page or something 
so that yeah, people we, can we, know. Sure, we we can do do that. But it, but if if it's an emergency, you're not going to use that number, and that and that's and that's my concern. If it's an emergency, and you know, every 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 everyone's emergency is different, and in terms of how they define define it. But if you feel it's an emergency, your first step is is to dial nine one one. That is the first the first step. And then some, some, something like, well, you know, my uh, my my street uh, is is bad, backed up or plow or I'm I'm plowed in or something something like that. Then then you you would go to either, I I don't I I'm not sure if, if the D, 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 DPW has that type type of phone 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 number, but you can start with the dis 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 dispatch if it's a non emergency, but something that needs to be be addressed. Okay, so a non-emergency, still do people have a way to know that unless if they haven't been at well, this well, meeting? Well, um, I know, I know, I know, I know the number, the, the number is pub, 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 published on, on, on the web, website, but we, we could do a better, we, we can make a concerted effort to make, make sure that it's pretty, 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 pretty well, 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 uh, and ad, 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 advertised. Okay, and I can and I can talk yeah. talk talk with the dis, oh. dispatch about about that as to the as to the best best way to do that. I personally okay. was not aware that two five three number would be operable during the weekday week weekends or after it's a 24, hours. It, it's a twenty twenty four says says seven record recorded line. Perfect. All right. So it's two five nine three zero eight zero. Yes. Yeah. That's what you but said. Okay. Let me let me let me work on getting making 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 sure we roll 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 it off the right right way because I can't we can't you know we can't have you know, I don't I don't want to go so far to the other side where they're in the in the data with, with uh, calls for, for things that should go some somewhere else. We're gonna roll. We we need we need to do 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 this in the correct correct man, manner. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're saying that's for anything that might have to do with emergency. Well. But that's not a DPW kind of number you're saying. No, that's no, I... no, 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 it's not. And that's one of the other things I want to ch check with the DPW okay. as well and see if they have okay. a citizen number or whatever you want you want to call 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 it okay. with folks that that need assistance in some way, shape, shape, or form can 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 call. So that's so that's 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 why I need need to work work on, on this and see what what and see what we can come up up with. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Do you have any? I, I mean, I missed what you said earlier, and I know this was something yeah. that you thought of. So yeah, I was just uh, trying to find a place where one facing similar situation like me could call um, after work hours or on weekends, and it seems like there was a number there which I wasn't aware of before. And I hate to call nine one one and get their valuable time because I can't. I can't get help come into my house. So. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But but but, the, but wait. But if when when all else fails, dial nine one one. I mean, if 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 you have no 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 other re 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 recourse, dial nine one one. You're going to get some type of response. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do. So all I guess right, the that's... next thing is maybe the dispatchers have to be aware that that occasionally they're going to get calls from people who know they're not supposed to call 911 but don't know where yeah, else to call but it happens all it happens all the time oh okay and they know where to tell people to call yeah absolutely okay good thankfully i haven't called 911 in a while mm -hmm. <laughs> not since the flood <laughs> mm -hmm. okay thank you thank you sure. thank you yeah. Sure. And as a side note, um, uh, Guilford is running a little bit late, but he does intend to join this meeting so that we can ask a follow-up question if we need to of, of him. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Right. Thank you Thank very you. much for coming. I'm so sorry my computer and I aren't getting along today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for Amherst Center, Massachusetts. Hey, computer, stop. There are currently no <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad word in my house. All right. Okay. So the uh, we're into old business, and um, the next thing on the agenda is the MOD grant application. And um, 
Chris, uh, Rob did have an invitation, but, oh, and there he is. There we go. Perfect timing. Also, there was a meeting yesterday to which I received an invitation Friday afternoon, which I didn't read until like Friday night or Saturday. For yesterday, there was a meeting from uh, Jennifer Mullins about this. And so I don't know if anyone intended that, but if you did, could you include that in whatever you're going to present? Chris or Rob, you can take it away. So um, I guess I'll start and then Rob can join me when he feels like he wants to. Um, the MOD grant applications are due pretty soon, I think by the end of the month. Rob might have a more precise date than I have. Um, we had a meeting the other day and we talked about a number of projects. Some of them are pretty big. And so we kind of um, came, came up with some other strategies for the larger projects. But the two that we thought were most promising were, um, oh, and I should also tell you that my sob story. Um, once again, the planning department is down a staff person. We thought we were very excited uh, recently when uh, we were able to hire Jacinta Williams, who's a wonderful planner. She came from Pittsfield and also from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And she's um, really gonna be a great help to us. But um, at the same time, we found that we were going to be losing Rob Wachilla. So um, the planning yeah. department is once again, um, sort of hampered, but we'll do our best to get done what we need to get done. Um, so I just wanted to let you know about that. But the two projects that we thought were most promising for the MOD grant for this year were um, the Munson Library, which we sent in last year. We submitted that last year and we got a very good review of it. Um, MOD, the MOD people said that um, it was a really good application. And the reason it wasn't accepted was because there were so many other applications from cities and towns that hadn't received MOD grants in the past. And so they felt that Amherst had received MOD grants. And so we needed to give um, other people a turn. But since it was a really good application, I don't know if you remember it, but the, uh, the idea was to provide um, access to the south door of the Munson Library. And that's the door that faces the uh, South Congregational Church. Right now, there's a series of steps there. And there's also a heavy door when you get to the top. So um, so that the idea of making that door accessible seemed to be really important. Um, the project also includes making the main doors of the I guess it's the west side of the Munson Library accessible. Um, you know, those are also heavy doors, so making them easier to open. I don't know if that uh, Rob might be able to add, um, you know, that there would be some sort of mechanism there. I think that's the idea that we would uh, put a push button there. But um, since that building is used for um, programs, both for youth and adult, and it's also used for voting, we thought it was important to make that building as accessible as possible. So that would be, I think, our first um, priority to uh, submit to the MOD grant. And then we had another idea, which was um, a project that we've been working on for a while, and we had brought it to you several months ago. And that was, um, we have accessible trails that are being created at the Hickory Ridge Conservation Area. Um, in fact, they're under construction right now, and I've, saw, I've seen pictures of them. They look like they're really progressing well. But the idea is to um, apply for an MOD grant to improve the parking lot access. And um, we had a plan that we presented to the planning board, and it was approved. Um, and it included walling off part of, I shouldn't say walling off, but separating part of the parking lot from the parking lot that's closer to the building so that you could have um, public access from the driveway that's um, to the east and come right into the parking lot and then you'd have accessible spaces um, as close as possible to the ADA trails. And those uh, that area, we, we were going to use Jersey barriers to demarcate that area from the area that's closer to the building. Um, 
it turns out the Jersey or barriers aren't available anymore, and we're going to have to think of some other way of separating those two places. Um, and in addition to that, we wanted to make that portion of the parking lot, um, you know, as smooth and as, you know, easily navigated as possible and mark out the uh, handicapped spaces there. Um, we did send images of both of these projects to Pamela. I'm not very good at sharing my screen, but um, if Pamela is able to, maybe we could look at uh, plans for these and um, Rob might have some more uh, things to add about um, both of those projects. But anyway, we thought um, Munson Library would be the first priority and the Hickory Ridge parking lot would be the second priority, but we also said to ourselves, well, we could submit both of them and see which one the MOD office um, would prefer. We're trying to keep these projects to be um, within the range of $100,000 or less um, because, uh, you know, there's, there's not that much money available and it seemed like most of the projects were lower than $100,000. So we didn't want to ask for something that was really big. I know we have issues about um, getting into town hall. Um, we need to come up with a design mechanism for solving that problem, which we don't have yet. We think we might have some money to solve the design portion of that problem, but and then maybe we could come back and apply for some money next year to construct it. And there were a couple of other things that we thought about, Mill River being one of them. But these two projects were the ones that we thought were the best shot for this year. Um, Pamela, are you able to show any either of those plans that I sent you yesterday? Um, I can uh, attempt to share screen. Um, Elise has her hands up. If, um, which would the committee like to like to see both of them? I can try to do that. Well, I guess um, why don't we take them one at a time? I just have a, two questions about Munson Library. Um, number one, if we are going to apply for that one, this committee wrote a supporting letter. We would need to update it um, as part of your application. Um, I think you had a letter from the town clerk as part of that application about the voting. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And also, um, I mean, it may not be an issue given the bid that came in for the library, but I don't know that we even referred to the fact that the Jones library was not going to be um, as usable in the next few years as it has been. So I don't know if we added anything or should add anything to the packet about that, that they're, that they're, you know, we're out to bid or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, but that sounds good. Um, so if we're going to do that one, I, we would just need to update all the letters. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm just trying to think if there's any new angles on it. The only one I could think of was the library, the, the, uh, the other library, the Jones library, which as of three days ago, we don't even know if it's going to get built. So I don't know. Anyway. Um, uh, okay, who wants to talk about um, the uh, the other proposal for for uh, Pomeroy Lane for the Hickory Ridge? Oh, so Myra, can I interrupt for a second? Um, Elise has her hand hand up. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. um, All right. this might be off topic, but if we're talking about access issues and projects, um, what about the elevator in the senior center? Is that is that uh, able to be part of that uh, it's, grant thing? So it was, um, it's back online as of uh, yesterday around 4.15. Okay. So, so it's currently working now. I Thank you so much. This morning. Yeah. Thanks. I just wanted to check on that. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I know there are people on this committee who, or at least I think there are people who would want to talk about the Hickory Ridge Axe. So now's your chance. Well, this, this is Jim. Yep. Um, and I, I mean, I really think we should opt for the Munson Library at this point. I, I know that in all our discussions about Hickory Ridge, most of our conversations have revolved around how are people who don't have their own vehicles going to get there? Uh, and so I would just as soon wait and see how everything unfolds there and whether there's reliable transportation for folks who, who you know, don't have their own vehicles uh, to get out there and make use of the accessible trails. And we've already, you know, we've been through the 
months in application a lot. That sounds like a good, solid thing to do. And boy, if, if there's overflow, now we've got North Amherst Library, which is accessible, and Munson Library, which will be much more accessible uh, if Jones runs into problems. So I, I think it's a good option for us. Okay. Um, anyone else want to talk about either of these? I think what Jim, uh, I don't know if you were present for this initial discussion, Chris, but I think the problem with the Hickory Ridge is that there's no bus that goes there. So the only way to get there is via paratransit or perhaps the senior center silver van, which we wanted to have Haley come and talk about. We don't know how receptive the Council on Aging or she would be to using that van to get people to Hickory Ridge because it's great that they're building all these trails and it's great that you want to do the parking lot, but for people who don't have a way to get there, um, there's no bus and there isn't likely to be a bus. So I understand that. Yes, that's right. So um, I guess that that was a serious concern for a number of us. Jim very kindly, you know, mentioned it, but I mean, it was serious concern that came up at the meeting that we had. Um, I, I remember that. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, um, what do people think? What do people think about applying for both of them? Well, I mean, personally, I'd rather get months in the library myself too, until there's some kind of a commitment to get some kind of way to get there other than, you know, signing up for paratransit and, waiting a half an hour or an hour to get picked up when you want to leave and, um, you know, things like that. So um, I, I don't know. I don't know what people want to do, but now is your chance. Cody, Cody has his hand raised. So Okay. Hello. Go ahead. Chris, I see you with parents. I found this out. If you use that, the, my concern is that he could would not be a priority pickup. Was that being said, even paratransit can cancel? The ride. Also, it's just that I was to put more into months than I really because Hickory Ridge has huge issues. So I'm sorry I didn't get all of that, but I know, did anyone get all of that? I know, the, so there are huge issues because you something to do with paratransit. Um, so, did anyone hear it better than I did? So I, I did I hear think... that, oh, I heard oh. Cody say that he would prefer Munson Library because there are huge issues with access to Hickory Ridge. That's okay. the gist of what I think he said. Right, and the, I'll just correct? add. Go ahead. So I'll just add that one of the reasons the, was that uh, paratransit would not consider uh, Hickory Ridge a priority ride and that they would have the ability to cancel the, cancel the ride, which might leave um, people stranded. So I think that was all, also part of this conversation. Well, and paratransit he's... does not prioritize rides. Right. Um, they're not allowed to prioritize rides. But um, if you are calling in as a senior citizen, you know, like for, I forget what they call it, the other kind that isn't ADA, the ADA is not allowed to be prioritized. There is a same day program now um, that would be a little bit scary to do for this because you don't know if you, and that you could end up there and not, get out. <laughs> um, but um, so, yeah, the transportation to Hickory Ridge is a formidable problem. And I know everyone's real excited about it. 
And for those of us who could get there with somebody else's car, and those of us who, you know, once you can get there with someone else's car or or some kind of vehicle that you know is going to be there, I think it's going to be very nice. But it's really, um, it's very, it's most accessible for people who can get there easily on a beautiful day when you say, I'd like to go to Hickory Ridge and take a walk or, you know, go out there and, you know, get some fresh air and exercise in nature. Um, you don't have to, but, you know, normally people don't plan four days in advance or even one day in advance. Oh, let's go to Hickory Ridge if it's nice, right? So it's it's a wonderful thing, but it's people who use paratransit don't have any access to spontaneity whatsoever. And that is really how places like that get used. So I would say for the disabled community who has no access to their own transportation, um, it's a wonderful thing for mostly for other people. Is, is that, would anybody want to disagree with that? No? Okay. Anyone else have anything? I mean, I think uh, Jim and Cody have very s similar sentiments. Um, what do the rest of the committee think? I share that sentiment. <laughs> the least does. Okay. Ian, are you there? Myra. Yeah. The, oh, okay. The, the um, yep. What happened? What is the status of the uh, signal alerts that would help people with uh, visual impairments? <laughs> and uh, could this MOD grant be used for that? Because okay. that's a very important to do, but I don't know the status of it. Wait, not it, relevant to Hickory Ridge, relevant to what? It's just another uh, MOD grant options. Oh, so just more of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. I so understand. Gilfred is, Gilfred is here. He would be able to answer okay. about the status. Okay. Yeah. Because that's a very, and it is very mostly used, and it's such an ongoing struggle for those of us with visual impairments. Yeah, thank you for that, bringing that up. Gilford, are you yeah. available to talk to us about uh, the status yeah. of, or the, or the plan for um, the rest of the audible pedestrian signals? Um, because that's something that maybe we could also consider applying for. I don't know. Yes. So the the money that's left over after having the survey done was not enough to buy all the equipment. So there's a request that was approved by the Capital Improvement Committee to fund the rest. So it's in the budget, oh, wow. should be released. And then once that money is available, I'll order all the pieces and start installing. Wow. Cool. Thank Ooh. you. Wow. Well, all, right. all right, so we don't need to do that. Um, the town right. hall project, I'm sorry, go ahead. Just fantastic. I'm just, but the one on North Pleasant Street doesn't make any sound, just to let you know. <laughs> Wait, which one are you talking about? The one it's, by the church? Yeah. By Kellogg? Well, I don't know Kellogg, but um, you come, it's near the post office. No, yeah. Yeah. Kellogg. yeah. Yeah. Kel Kel okay. Yeah. Okay. I used it this morning and I could not, luckily I could see the walk signal because the sun was at, at the right angle for me, but otherwise, <laughs> all right, I'll shut up now. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, is it the general consensus of the group that we'd rather you apply for Munson Library? Can I have a motion if it is? Let's, maybe we need a motion. Okay. Somebody gonna move something? All right, I'll move. What are you Please. moving? Oh, that we apply for the um Munson Library. Okay, is there a second? I second that. Okay. Um any further discussion? Ian, are you here? Ian is not here. Ian is not here. Okay, because I know he had things to say about this too. Um, all right, so we have, we don't have Marty either, correct? 
No, Marty is here. Oh, Marty is here. Okay. Marty, do you have an opinion? You're the only one who hasn't spoken to this. No. No. <laughs> okay. All in favor of our preference for the Munson Library for Elise's, um, for Elise's motion, say yes. 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 Okay. Uh, I heard yes. everybody. All opposed? No. Okay. So everybody, 5-0. We would rather you applied for Munson Library. Um, yeah, I would. Um, if you applied for Hickory Ridge and got it and didn't get Munson Library, I don't think we'd like that. Um, just because it feels like it has much more applicability to the community of disabled people, and I know um, the the you know the accessible trails is something to be very excited about, um, but not if you can't get there, not until we can get there, is what I would say. Um, so may I, I ask a question? Yeah, uh, this is Chris. Um, we need this letter of support, and I don't remember the date that the application is due. It might be after your next meeting. So, would the you 14th, authorize Pamela to draft a letter for Myra's oh, sure. signature um, to, you know, to get us the letter of support? Pamela, you have the letter. I sent you. A, I wrote the letter, um, and I sent it to you, and you put it into the application, correct? Is that how right. it went? I placed it on um, on letterhead, which I can yeah. find the former letter and update it to include the comment that you made about um, the possibility that the Jones Library might be offline. So, right, okay. And, okay, great. Um, and then I'll send that to you and um, for your okay. signature. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. All right, so we, um, you know, we wish you luck with this. That would be a very good thing for us to get that Munson Library. And maybe if they see it coming two years in a row, they'll do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, bye bye. Bye, Chris. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, next is whoops. Next is um, well to talk. Next is are we going to talk next about? Heather Stone and those other projects. Is that why, Guilford? So you answered one of our questions, which is great. Um, the other question we had, oh, was about the flashing, um, the uh, beacons, flashing beacons th that are surrounding the um, roundabout on Triangle Street. There are no. Right, but they were voted. They were it voted was, if it was deemed necessary. If you want to request that, say, they're deemed, that you think they are necessary, then we can probably move forward, I guess. I would. They're not required to be there, but it was. There, if you want to say that you think they're necessary, you should make a motion and send it to town manager. So I'll just say before the motion, about three years ago when we applied for this grant um, and the reason we applied for it and got it was that the roundabout took away access for people uh, with many different kinds of disabilities to cross the street at Triangle Street, to cross East Pleasant at Triangle Street. It's really not possible to do it safely. So we put in, we thought, we figured out um, that if you put beacons over there by, uh, whatchamacallit, um, Prey Street, and if you put a beacon on Triangle Street, you would, but particularly Prey Street, you would have a way to cross the street much more safely because you can't cross it at all. And I think that's what we recommended and does anybody remember more about this? But it was a long meeting and it had a lot of discussion about how that roundabout has really destroyed access um, yeah. to crossing the street. There, there is one at Prey and Triangle. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah. I mean... It is there? There is. There's only... The, the one thing that we're waiting for there is we need some remote buttons 
um, because we oh, wait, we, you're talking prey and triangle. Prey and triangle, okay. there is yes. a crosswalk. Yes, I was talking prey and East Pleasant. Yes, the way that, that one was that the way that one was left is we would make accommodations for them, and if they would decide they needed to go in, then they would be put in. But we do not see the need. But if you think you need see the need, then you need to make a recommendation to the town manager mm -hmm. to put them in. Elise, you cross the street there. What do you what do you think? I would I would love to see them in there. Yeah. I mean, I they're they're a good, you know, safety feature. Well, otherwise, I don't know how you can really cross. You can cross a Kellogg. Yeah, you can't really, you know, yeah, you can't do the you can, you're right. You can't cross without the beacons. It's just not You right. can cross a Kellogg, you cannot cross triangle because of the roundabout. Nope. It's like a death trap for anybody who doesn't Forget see real well. No, yeah. I avoid it like the plague. I just don't do it. Yeah, you know, this is Jim. And and I think, you know, all the folks, well, not all of them, but there used to be a lot of traffic from Chestnut Court and the Nutting Apartments to get downtown. Yep. Um, and mm -hmm. the way it's set up now with a roundabout, that just doesn't exist. And so nope. that, that, to me, is a real problem. Yeah. Well, yes, here. discouraging people to use the same things they were able to do before. So now nobody wants to dare jumping on a traffic. Roundabouts oh are very dangerous for pedestrians, leave alone people with disabilities. I think people who are able-bodied and can walk quickly, which is 90% of the people in this town, um, it is fine. I mean, it's a little scary, but especially when the sun is low in the winter and you want to cross toward the west. But, um, you know, I, I but it, it is a serious, serious, serious problem. And coming down from Chestnut Court, I think the only thing you could do is get to the corner there on Triangle, make a left, go up to Prey Street, cross with the beacon, go where the it, in the street because the sidewalks don't exist. Um, to go all the way from Triangle Street, make that right turn and go to East Pleasant and make a left turn to go downtown. I think that's the only thing you can do unless um, unless anybody has a different idea of how you can do it. But I think it's the only way you can do it. And one of my problems with Prey Street um, is that there are no the sidewalk is not continuous. You have to go in the street. There's there's a continuous sidewalk on Prey Street. It's on the north um, side. Not on the north. There are reasons that when you cross over to where it makes the right turn, can does that is that a sidewalk as well? There's there's a sidewalk which go, which goes from Triangle to East Pleasant on the north side of Prey Street. There's okay. no there's not a full sidewalk on the south on the side south because side. the bank the bank breaks it up. The side there's parking lot. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. all right, but you you think there is a sidewalk there. I the last time I did that, I thought this is not gonna be easy for anybody to do. Okay. Um so but that is the only way that I can think that you can go from Chestnut Court to downtown is to use Prey Street. So if you want to end up on the other side of the street, um, you can go down to Kellogg, but you should not have to. Yeah, I don't know. I'm where afraid to... we're getting into the weeds here. I mean, the, the town built these apartments years ago, um, and you know, Chris Palamas and Joe Tringali. You know, we're talking the 1970s now, so you have a disability population, a disability community that's there. Now, what the town has done, not through purpose, not through intent, but through, I don't know, what do you want to call it, inattention, has sort of blocked the access of that community to downtown. And it's not right. And people are already slowing down to go into the rotary anyway. So it's not really going to be a, an impediment to traffic. There's no reason why we can't have this, to my way of thinking. Amen. OK. Want to make a motion, Jim? I'm sorry, Myra, what did you say? Oh, do you want to make a motion about the fact that we believe that we need the rapid flashing beacon 
at East Pleasant and Prey Street. I move that the Disability Advisory Access Committee send a letter to the town manager recommending that we need a, you know, <laughs> now I'm, I've, I've lost track of my words here. Um, we need full and safe access across Triangle Street. I might make, that's what I've got. If somebody wants to amend that and make it more coherent, that's great. I don't know how else to do it. Marty Guilford, do you have any any of any other ideas about how a person could get across there besides using the two edges of Prey Street? My only thing is you could use the intersection, but you've said that for some people it's not usable. So <laughs> my only thing I would add to your motion is do you want it on all four approaches or all four crosswalks? Or do you just want them on the Triangle Street crosswalk on the east side and possibly the East Pleasant Street crosswalk on the south side so you can get to the park? Although there's one there's one farther down the road that gets you to the park. As many as we can get. I think so, you need it on all points because it's yes. It's really hard to get across that intersection. So I guess my what I'm I'm not understanding exactly the question. Guilford, are you saying that when we want to cross East Pleasant to get to the park, there needs to be one on the west side at the park, and there needs to be one on the east side on by the building, the new building there. That right? or do you want them all the way around? I don't know that there needs to be one at the north side of the street and the south side of, of of Ray Street. I mean, that sounds like too many to me, but there needs to be at least four of them. With, you know, that, I mean, no, there needs to be like a button. I don't know what you're calling this. If so, I am in front of Primo 2 and I, I want to walk. Can I share a I, map with you? I'm sorry? Can I share a map with you? Yeah, it would be good for everybody except me. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, and if you can keep your um, cursor moving very slowly so that I can see it better. Thank you. So everyone can see the, this is the roundabout. Yeah, can you move your cursor very slowly? Cause I'm also vision impaired. Thank you. Yep. So, the, to, to accommodate the people who live at Chestnut Court to go downtown, they would come down this sidewalk here. Where's the, where's the cursor? Oh. I'm on the, I guess, I'm right. The, uh, the cursor is green, if that helps a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm just not seeing it. All right, I'll just listen. Right. Do you need a green? Do I want me to change it? It's just very small. So, oh, there it is. Oops. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, there I see it now. Okay, thank you. No, it's a good color. It's just tiny. Okay. So you would it. come. You would come down this sidewalk, and you would cross here. Where oh. is here? This is the. This is the first. This is the round. The crosswalk on the east side of Triangle Street at the intersection. Yep. So you want a light. You would want a light there. And then possibly a light going across to the park. Or do you want lights at all four or crosswalks? That would be my only suggestion to add to your motion is that you think they're needed, but you want to say you want them at all four crosswalks or you just need them at certain crosswalks. The first one is the first one is alongside the side of the building that Primo Two is in. Right. This is the Primo Two crosswalk, I guess you'd call it. Mm. So, and then then you would go to the left 
to go to Triangle Street. That would be the second one. I mean, to go to uh, Prey Street on Triangle. That's the second one? No, we're right at the intersection of, of Triangle and East Pleasant Street is where we're at right now. Well, there really isn't an intersection there anymore. It's a roundabout intersection. So then in that in the roundabout intersection, there's four crosswalks. Do you think you need to have the RFBs at all four crosswalks in the intersection? Or would you think you only need I, I don't personally. Uh, this is a, maybe a bigger conversation than we can have right now. But I don't personally think that those, that putting them in the roundabout I mean, how do you even find them? Uh, they, they they do beep just like the ones that are at the intersections are supposed to beep. We're actually we're actually getting some complaints from neighbors who don't like the new RRFBs because they have the beeping locator. Well, oh, the, well, the locator is supposed to be not so loud when there isn't a lot of traffic. I understand that. I mean, it's supposed to change with the ambient noise, which which it does. But when the ambient noise is is when there's no ambient noise, it's it's the only noise that's out there. Well, yeah. OK, I really don't know where these things should go. I never considered that putting them in the roundabout at all would be safe. I personally think that since you're um willing to have the discussion of where to put them that it would be good to have maybe some a consultant who does um who works with people with visual impairments to help you figure out where they should go because mm -hmm. putting them in the middle of the crosswalk of the uh, roundabout i don't think i still wouldn't do it <laughs> i don't think i would either <laughs> No. So I what you're asking for is a mid-block crosswalk between East Pleasant Street and Prey Street, which most people would say not to do that either. Um, I have another suggestion of to where go we ahead. Go. Um, you know, there's a crosswalk right near the fire station, like near CVS and the fire station. Yeah, yes. there is one that could use a beacon. Well, well, but let's get back to the roundabout. I know. But... I, I do think we could use some professional help, and we might not have to pay for it. We could get somebody um, from the right. Commission for the Blind to come and look and see where it might be useful to put them. Um, mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't want to be responsible for deciding where to put them, and I don't know if Elise would either, but no. I and maybe Jim or somebody else can, or Saren, you can provide input from a wheelchair user's perspective about mm -hmm. where those would be least frightening um, and most helpful. But I think, I don't think we can decide right here, right now. I think getting, for us to get into the weeds about the exact place is something that I don't feel professionally qualified to do. And yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And you. actually, I was only asking because the motion was to put them at the intersection. <clears throat> so I guess that's not where you really want them. And personally, I'm not going to sign off on a mid-block crosswalk. So maybe you're correct. We need to bring in a consultant and pay them to do yeah. the analysis right. and put their put their name on it and their their credentials on it. Because I won't I won't do one a mid-block in this area. Hmm. Which a mid block means between Prey Street and East Pleasant Street on Triangle. That's well, the it that's like the most... we need to have more discussion, and and that isn't going to happen today. That what no. I would say though is that you know people are already use those crosswalks, <laughs> um, and and that's not going to stop because we you know put a crosswalk a half block away. So I mean I, I think we have to be realistic too. But again, that's that's for another day apparently. Well, I guess the question is, how are people supposed to get off across the street from the east side to the west side at Triangle? You did come up with a workaround for people to get along the east side 
um, the you know the the uh, Triangle Street one um, is a workaround. But getting from the east side to the west side, there isn't a workaround unless you go down to Kellogg. Is, am I accurate with that? Um, I guess I don't really follow what you're saying. I mean, if you want to cross East Pleasant Street, you can't do it except at Kellogg. There isn't anywhere north of Kellogg that you can do it. If you're walking down East Pleasant Street, right? Well, you can. There's a. There is. Well, you gotta cross Triangle Street somewhere to go down East Pleasant Street. You're talking about that's the problem. Triangle Street. All right. So maybe we need to we need to take this offline. Um, we need um, I think we need a motion that says that we encourage that we we are asking the town to get some professional services about where to place beacons that will make it possible mm -hmm. for that intersection to be functional. For people with. Uh, visual and other kinds of disabilities. And frankly, there's, you know, Jim wasn't talking about people with visual disabilities. There are issues for yeah, lots mobility. of people with disabilities. Yeah. yeah. I, Makes sense. I'm not sure we need such a motion. I mean, we, we've got connections at MOD. We've got connections at MCB. They can come out. They can talk with us about the situation. I'm afraid if we turn it over to the town, you know, two or three years from now, we'll be having this discussion again. That's my concern. Just like two or three years ago, yeah. we had this discussion the last time. Yeah. That's correct. This is not a new discussion. I, we were we spent a lot of time on this grant um, that that the town got and didn't fulfill the way it was supposed to be. Okay, um, we will. I guess we'll bring people in. Pamela, do you feel like we need any kind of a motion? No, I don't. I don't think that you need a, a motion. I agree with Jim. I think we can make inquiries okay. to MOD or the Commission on the Blind and, um, okay. and see what they recommend. Okay. All right. Is there are, are there? Oh yeah, Heatherstone. What happened last night at the? Did Did you make any decisions, or did the, the community have anything to say that made it look clear to you what you're going to do with it? Because apparently they want us to talk about it. So. Um... Heather Stone's last night was went very well. Um, everyone wants the speed limit reduced. Everyone wants the road repaved. Um, everyone vote and vo uh, voiced a support for the sidewalk as well. Um, one person wanted the sidewalk on the other side of the road than where it's proposed, but um, we don't know if that's really what's going to happen. Um, there was support moderate support for the roundabout many roundabouts along the road to slow people down as a traffic calming device um the t the tso will take all this information and at their next meeting which is the thirst is thursday they will talk about and decide whether or not to make a recommendation of how, what to do on the street so the i guess the question to you was what how did you feel or as a committee do you support the sidewalks do you support some possible um, traffic calming measures. Do you also want to weigh in and say, yes, the speed limit should be only 25 miles an hour? Um, that's probably what you're being asked. Okay, anybody have anything to say about it? <laughs> well, I got to say, I'm almost always in support of sidewalks. Yep. So it, I am total support of the sidewalk. I mean, I think that's other than reducing the speed limit. And I guess you're not allowed to put speed bumps in there because of the fire department. So um, I, per, I personally hate the mini roundabouts. I think it's ridiculous to have them so three of them so close together. Um, and I think as a, I, I just don't see how that's going to facilitate anything except slowing down traffic. And I, it'll be fun for kids on bikes to keep going around and around. That's fun. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm, I mean, 
the fewer roundabouts, the better, if you ask me. And but, but we uh, so we Jim likes sidewalks. I like sidewalks. Speed limit, uh, whatever you're legally allowed to do is fine. Problem is, are people going to follow it and are people going to enforce it? And you can't you can't know that. So. Can I make a very quick comment about yes. the sidewalks? Uh, one thing that always scares me is long sidewalks with access on one end and no getting off, no access on the other end. Many times have I mm. turned back. Mm. And if uh, the public works is aware of that and make sure any sidewalk will have equal access on both ends of the long sidewalks. Such a frustration from my own experiences. <laughs> um, so, there, there's ramps off at each end of the sections of sidewalk, yes. Perfect. <laughs> Maybe Amherst is on top of things. <laughs> Okay, so we like sidewalks. We want to make sure that they're equal, that there is easy access on and off. And what do people think about the roundabouts besides me? No, I don't I like hate roundabouts them. either. I hate them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't. Do I them. like roundabouts personally, and I think they're safer than traffic lights. But again, it really depends on nope. the situation. Well, look at the the one, the roundabout by Atkins. How can you cross, get across, you know, from one side of Atkins across? But they said when we brought this up, they said, oh, there is no other development on the other side at all. You know, the corner of the, oh, I don't remember the name of the street. They road? They road. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You know, yeah, there is no much, not much business over there, but who knows what will happen in 10 years. But for the traffic flow, it is safer and it is faster. That I agree. But for pedestrians, it's very user unfriendly. Yeah. Forget this it. is not a busy street, Heatherstone. It's not a busy street. When people go down it, it's like a straightaway, and all the streets in in Echo Hill come off of it. But it's it's. I mean, is that fair, um, Gilbert? Yes. Okay. What is the reason then that they are putting these um, roundabouts there if it is not a busy street? It it actually it it's it is relatively. There's a lot of traffic that goes down it, and then most people drive a little faster than they should down it. So the goal is to slow people down while they drive down it. Even if it's just a few cars, just to slow people down because it does have a little higher speed. People don't obey the speed limit as it is now. That's what the problem is. The street, speed. really, everything. it's the main drag through Echo Hill, but it's not really a main drag. I mean, it's nothing like Main Street or anything. It no, doesn't have that much traffic. It it's, it just has all the streets in Echo Hill come off of it, and it's a it's the route to get to like the Hampshire Fitness Center if you're on the Pelham side, and, or there are yeah. some there are some yeah. businesses you can get to from it. And the speed bumps do not serve that function. We we tip. We typically don't do try not to do we Amherst try tries not to do speed bumps where the uh, buses are and where the fire apparatuses will be using the road primarily. Uh, UMass doesn't UMass puts them everywhere. So if you drive up if you drive um, Mass Ave and think yeah. that's the way to go, I mean there's yeah. there's speed bumps every probably two hundred feet now on Mass Ave, three hundred at the most. Um, there's a lot of speed bumps on Mass Ave to slow to try to slow people down. Um, does it work? I don't know. Yes, it does. It has made um, Mass Ave and Commonwealth Ave much safer. Safer, yeah. 
Yeah. There were lots of and accidents. There, there were a before. lot of accidents. And one of yeah. the big problems on Mass Ave is you have right. west, low west sun and glare. So you yep. can't even see people crossing the street. Right. Yep. Right. But right. Heatherstone, so, is, is it not? It doesn't go that way. They're no. going to use, I mean, I would much rather use speed bumps than all those roundabouts. I yeah. Mean, what's and, the difference between having a speed bump every 200 feet and a roundabout every 200 feet? You're not th going that, to. It, it's not a vertical displacement. A speed bump is what we call a vertical displacement. You go up and down. Yeah. We're, we're a roundabout or a chicane or a narrowing. You're actually going vertical. You're going horizontal. You're being moved side to side and you're slowing down by going side to side, not up and down. And you don't and have problems plowing it. What? I said you don't have problems plowing a roundabout like you do speed bumps. That's true. Yeah, you have. And what yeah. about what about the cost of it? Like, how much does it cost to well, put a roundabout versus speed bumps? So these roundabouts are very small, uh, and they're going to probably be about the same price, if not maybe a little less. Wow. So, to, in the interest of moving things along, um, do we have an? Do we have a? I mean, you want to know what we think about speed bumps. Versus, I mean, no. You want to know what we think about roundabouts? Um, I think, I guess, most of us don't like them. Can't say all of us don't like them. And um, we are we are united about the sidewalks. And I think it's really critical that we have them. If you put in a roundabout, are you going to be able to have a sidewalk? Is the sidewalk going to go around the whole roundabout? Yes. So if you're walking on the sidewalk, you're just going to go around the roundabout. And every time there's a street coming off, I mean, I don't even know how the street will come off of the roundabout. It doesn't, I don't, anyway, I don't know. Some of us like to walk relatively straight. Some of us get mixed up if we're always going in circles. But um, I, you know, personally, I don't like the roundabout. And I guess some of the people in the neighborhood did and some of the people in the neighborhood did not. Anyway, um, I guess this committee has weighed in on the sidewalk. Is that correct? You can say that, yeah. And the slow speed limit, as slow as you can make it. I mean, if you can make it 20 miles an hour, go for it. But that doesn't mean that it's going to get enforced. And that doesn't mean it's going to be, you know, <laughs> that people are going to follow the rules. And until some kid gets killed there, then maybe they will for a while. It's just... It's a horrible thing and that people, yeah. you know, you can't somehow people, people don't have any interest in thinking about anybody other than themselves when they're driving a car. So sometimes anyway. Um, Can I make one more? Yes. One more question for um, Guilford. Guilford, are you going to have curb cuts at these roundabouts? Curb cut, curb cuts for the sidewalk to come down. Yeah, for the sidewalk. Yes, they, yep, they have to be. Okay, can you make sure that they're orthogonal, that they follow the path of travel, so that uh, yes. that the pads are set, so that with a cane <laughs> you can tell which direction you're going. You know what I mean? Um, I do. I know. <laughs> That's why I brought it up. I don't even. I was just hoping they'd go away. The but. curb cuts that that are set on an angle, to you know, are radial to the. They call them uh, apex curb cuts. Yeah, ape, I didn't remember the name. Apex yeah. curb cuts are really tough for the blind because yes. they put you in the wrong direction. You use those curb cuts to figure out where you're supposed to go, especially in a roundabout. You don't know where you're supposed to go. Because there's nothing straight about it, yeah. so the, those those domes are supposed to be exactly straight ahead of you, facing where you're supposed to cross to go to the other side of the street. So you're supposed to be able to use those domes the way they're set to cross the street directly to the other side, not not in not out into traffic, so you can figure out where the other side of the street is. The the, the the dome the domes will be the domes will be set perpendicular to the the sidewalk, 
which they what they mean what we do now is they're pulled up onto the sidewalk they're not at the bottom of the ramp anymore yeah. so oh. yes the domes will be perpendicular to the the travel way of the sidewalk yeah. you want it parallel to the sidewalk the well the tile runs across the sidewalk so it'll be perpendicular okay, okay. all right but the domes have to be parallel to where you go off and where you're going to go back on. That's yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So they send you in the right direction. Yes. Sounds okay. like a plan. All right. So however you do it, we want sidewalks and we want slower speed limits. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And we will get back to you about the rapid flashing beacons at East Pleasant Street. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. So we need to go to the commission um, thing um, because we don't have a lot of time. So Pamela and I met with Athena a month ago. Um, yes. And and we came up with, a, between the three of us, we had several drafts going around. I worked on it. I sent it to Pamela after we met with Athena. Athena or, and then, no, Pamela worked on it and sent it to me. I don't remember. But I haven't heard about it since. So where? what's the status of the plan for the proposal for us to be a commission? Um, that's what it's about. We Athena had all kinds of um, ideas about what it need, what our charge needed to say. And so there was a document produced that would describe what we were going to be, how we were going to be formed, what the charge was going to be, what our responsibilities were going to be, and uh, where is that at right now? So the last version of the document was sent to Athena for feedback. I uh, have neglected to follow up with her. Um, I do believe that the last document that we sent was, um, I'll say like 90% of what her expectations were. So if there's any um, changes to be made, they're pretty minor. Um, the timeline would be that the finished document would come to this committee um, and there would be um, a motion made to send that document with a request to town council to change the commission from a committee, uh, change the committee from a committee to a commission and there's a very specific timeline for the order that that needs to occur in. I think initially the goal was to have that occur before the end of this fiscal year, since we're now mid-May. Um, I'm not certain that we will achieve that, but I will need to reach out to Athena to see if we the committee may the commission may need to have um, our committee may need to have a uh, special meeting yep. for us to vote to get it to get us back on the on the timeline but where we are we've certainly moved ahead and we're very close okay all right we can get back about um the timing um marty is not going to be here anymore after may or after june um actually i have to do it earlier myra um okay i'm gonna send in my resignation this week um we have a two and a half override here in melrose that i had to um you want to vote i want to vote it's about the school okay. so yeah okay vested interest <laughs> okay all right so we will be down marty um, and the town has been made aware of that. I will not be available for the June meeting. I will be in Germany. Um, so we could still, you could still have a quorum without the two of us. Um, or we could schedule a meeting um, later in June. Mm but not all the way at the end of June because I won't be here the last week either. Um, Same. So the week of June 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, I could do. I could do something that week. Could anybody else not do that week? Elise, are you not that week? 
Yeah, the later in June for me, the less available I'll be. I really, yeah, if I do anything, it has to be earlier. Okay, but um, I could be available okay. June 14, Friday, or June 17, Monday. But that's yeah. the earliest in June that I could do it. I don't need to be there, but we will we'll be down Marty. So um, we'll be bound mm. down a lot of, you know, we have to be able to. Could you do June 14 or 15, Elise? Uh, 14 um, looking, or 17? Uh, hold on, I'm looking at my calendar right now. Uh, I could do, oh, sugar. Um, yeah, I could do the 14. Oh, that's a Friday. Yeah, I could do that. Okay, June 14, Friday, we could have a special meeting that I could attend and that Elise could attend. Okay. All right? So okay. we could give Athena that, you know, you could get the information from her earlier and we could set the meeting for that date. Right, I will be in touch with her um, as and respond back to the group as promptly as I can. I'm. I, you know, okay. I'll, I'll just share with everyone. I, you know that um, the assistant director is not here, and I'm a little bit overwhelmed by <laughs> the tasks that I have in front of me, including three events before between now and June 15th. So, oh my God, Ugh. this but, is not good. Okay, all right. But, um, um, this is really important, and I know that um, that Athena has worked out a schedule, so I will. Be in touch with her and get okay. back to everybody. Okay, June fourteenth. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Now, um, Jim, did you have an announcement that we didn't do? Well, I I made Jim's announcement while um, while oh, we okay. were trying. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. So, all I, right. but he okay. might have things to add. So I simply just announced that there had been changes to Section five hundred four, and. Um, um, so I don't, I, if you want to go into more detail, you might want to do that. Um, do we have time to do that? Did you do the minutes? We did approve the yes, minutes. Okay. Yeah. And there okay. is, there was at least one attendee. So there's one more thing on the agenda. Um, and um, you may, I think you'll probably need to have, there's still one attendee. So you definitely need to have your public comment period. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Jim, you want to talk more about the 504 or have people well, heard what they needed to? I I would suggest that we block off some time at a, at a future meeting. I mean, basically, the changes in, <laughs> um, in Section 504 have to do with accessibility and accommodations in medical offices. And so um, they are pretty significant in terms of the rights that people now have and the expectations that now exist for doctors and, and you know, various healthcare professionals. So mm -hmm. I think we want to have a chance to talk about that a bit. And then there's sort of the larger issue of how we communicate with the larger disability community. And, and I don't know whether this is something where we collaborate with uh, public health office in Amherst or, or what the story is. But, you know, I mean, it's great if the six or seven of us talk about things. But I think it's really important that we help our larger community understand what's going on and, and what their rights are and what they have a right to mm. expect. Because we all know that people still run into lack of access at medical offices and at clinics oh, yeah, and at absolutely. hospitals. And these things mm -hmm. continue to need to be tackled. Absolutely. This is a very yeah. big issue. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I think this is for July. Um, or if you want to do it in June without me, that's fine. But it's, I think I, it's a very important issue. Okay. Um, we have public comment period. Uh, who, is there so someone who'd like, I'm sorry? Myra, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We, um, and this could be for a later conversation, but the town hall accessibility assessment proposal. Oh, yeah. That came oh, in. Do you, do you, that's going to okay, require so more time. Do you want to postpone I'm, that? I'm going to be very brief about it. Okay. Um, Jeff Dugan won't come out here to do his assessment for free because he was involved in the decision on the variance. He feels it's a conflict and he's probably right. And so he suggested that we contact these people 
uh, other people, he gave us name and that person sent us somebody else. And that um, we're going to have to pay a lot of money for the service that he would have provided for free, as far as I can tell. And because he has a conflict, he can't do it. And the bill that he sent was something like $34,000. So Pamela, you can take it away from there. And Rob is here and has his hands up. So I'm going to probably okay. turn it over to, to him. Okay, to, perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rob, go ahead. Uh, thanks. I'll, I'll try to be brief as well. Um, I just wanted to give uh, the committee an update on on what we've talked about uh, among staff since the last time I came to your meeting uh, regarding the accessible route from the rear parking lot of Town Hall to the Main Street entrance. Uh, I've had a conversation and, and looked at some of the existing survey information that the engineering department has. And it's definitely questionable whether or not we could ever make that accessible route compliant. Uh, but the engineering department has offered and willing to work with me to do a little sur survey work in more detail and confirm one way or the other if if a uh, appropriate accessible route can be designed. Uh, I expect that I'll be able to schedule that as soon as the town uh, common project starts to come to the finish, uh, and that'll happen in the next few weeks. So early this summer, I'll be able to work with engineering and decide whether or not we can make the accessible route from the parking space to the Main Street entrance. And if not, if that's not looking like that's a possibility, uh, in fact, in, a, in no matter whether it is or isn't uh, a possibility, uh, we in our the town manager's proposed budget have a uh, amount dedicated to the design for uh, making uh, the accessibility improvement, whether it is uh, all site work related or building modification, uh, we plan to move uh, forward on the design uh, later this summer and get a get an architect and design team involved in, in contract to do that work. What that'll do is um, provide us with cost estimates and a plan that we can then uh, make a future request, whether it's next year's MOD grant or a combination of MOD and capital or just capital, uh, or maybe there's other funding sources, CDBG, we'll, we're gonna look at all the options and uh, you know later this year, be in a better position to look, just let you know where we intend to try to seek that funding when we have a design uh, complete. So are you saying that we should not continue to pursue the avenues that were suggested by Jeff Dugan? I don't think it's, I mean, it's it's not the normal course of, uh, you know, process for us to manage and maintain and improve our facilities. Um, you know, if, if he was willing to provide guidance, you know, that would have been great. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, we're going to work through the engineering and figure out whether or not we can make the route work. Uh, I'm happy to bring back the results of that and, and inform the committee of, of that. I, I mean, even if we're able to make it work uh, by design, there's still issues with, you know, whether or not that's the best, um, you know, way to go about it. So I want to talk that through. Um, it is a narrow alleyway, even if we're able to dedicate a, you know, a passage of five foot wide or some clear path. I think there's still a question about whether or not we want that to be the route. But I'd like to rule out whether or not we can do that. And maybe then I can come back, uh, present that information to the committee and talk about the next steps uh, before we actually engage the architect. And then again, you know, as we get into that work. Uh, so I don't think it's necessary, you know, your decision as a committee on where you want to go next, but um, I can commit those things that I just discussed and coming back with, with more information as we get into the work. Thank you. Um, Marty, I'm going to defer to your expertise here for you to give us your parting wisdom about how we should proceed because this is your last meeting, your last moments, and we're all, I mean, you have meant an incredible amount to moving this committee forward about accessibility, and we could never thank you enough. Oh, um, thank you. Really Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for the kind words. Um, I don't think we need to pursue getting another another review. I think 
uh, because it's already in, it, there's already something in the budget and Rob has agreed to pursue this. Um, I think we made our point. Yep, that, I think we did. That there is no such thing as, as just a lack of site accessibility as making a facility accessible. And uh, I wanna thank the town for understanding that the building isn't accessible until you can get there. So um, I think I think we did what we started out to do. Okay. All right. I Thank look forward you. to seeing it accessible at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you might get a call. We might. Yeah, we might. I'll come to the. I'll come to the opening of the new accessible entrance to the town. ribbon cutting. Yeah, the ribbon yes. for the ribbon cutting. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, really, thank you ever so much for yes. all that you've done to bring your expertise to this committee, and I can only hope that someone who has your level of expertise will apply to be on this committee or on the commission, um, and. Um, I, if you know anyone, can you please send names to me or Pamela um, for people that we might want to approach? Okay. Because it would be very helpful for us to have somebody um, who could really help us make sure that it's that things work as well as they should. Rob, thank you. Um, thank you for hearing us. Thank you for moving forward with um, inquiry. And we will look forward to, and we're, none of us is saying this is easy, but but it has to get done. So thank thanks. you for, yep. thanks, for your everyone. work on that. Okay. okay. Um, is there someone other than Rob here for, uh, for open discussion? Yes, there is still, there is still a member of the public. Okay. So we need to just call okay. for public comment. Okay. Is there someone who'd like to make a public comment? You can unmute, or somebody might have to give you permission to unmute. I don't know. Just hold on one second, and I'll bring you in. Well, may I give an update on one issue? Yeah, sure, while well, we're waiting. OK, um, we talked, I think, probably at the last meeting about um, Governor Healy's proposed cuts yeah. So the PCA program. And mm -hmm. I, I think we all know that the House Ways and Means uh, restored those funds yes. so that uh, the, those cuts weren't going to happen. Senate Ways and Means just came out with its budget uh, yesterday, I believe. And yes. they too restored funds so that there won't be cuts. The kicker <laughs> here is that the language is slightly different from between the House and Senate versions. So the, the language needs to be ironed out, but certainly it looks very good. The only problem then is whether Governor Healy might veto this because she has a line item veto, as, as I think we all know. So it's yeah. possible she might single this out and say, no, I'm going to veto it. And then we would have to worry about an override, which we might get. But that's where things stand as far as um, PCA budget cuts in the general court's budget. Can you keep on top of it and let us know if it looks like there's going to need to be, if there's going to be any contention in the con uh, conference committee that we might need to address? I will. Okay, cool. Thank you. You could be our watchdog on that. That I would be really appreciated. Okay, who is here from the public who would like to speak? I'm trying to connect. I, and I you are see... connected. We okay. hear you. There we go. Hello. Um, Hello. I, I will be super brief. I know we're over time here. Um, thanks for having me. Thanks for making this available. So my name is Rob Evely. I live up the top of Belchertown. I'm in Amherst often. And I, I just wanted to chime in. I, I've been working with digital accessibility for uh, 25 years now. And I thought I would just check in with some folks about uh, the big news from the Department of Justice on April 24th, 
that we now have web accessibility, Title II ADA web accessibility standards were announced. Yes. And wow. so perhaps you're all aware. I don't know. I thought I would chime in. I was. I did not know. I it mentioned it references 504, but it was great to hear from Jim that this indeed is now uh, inked in as 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 rule uh, for 504 also, where they pretty much lifted the tag. I just reviewed it during this meeting because I wasn't aware it was specifically in added to 504, just referenced to. So I just wanted to bring it up because it, to me in my world, it's it's my very narrow focus on accessibility. Um, and it's, it's a big deal to have standards finally in the ADA for web accessibility. And I've seen on the town website, there's been a, a significant effort to make sure um, web content's accessible, but there is a deadline in this new DOJ reg. And, and again, so sorry, am, am I being redundant with what you guys have talked about before? No, we actually haven't talked about this. I'm in another group that was that participated in the uh, response to the rulemaking. Yep. And um, so uh, I'm familiar with some of it. I didn't write the whole thing. We just had meetings about it. And this is a huge thing that they did. Yep. Um, they got a lot of response, particularly from the blindness community. Um, about this, and they they actually came up with something that's pretty good. Um, now we just need to get them to do Title Three, <laughs> which will right. be a whole other ballgame. But absolutely. Um, but no, it's really good. The town website is reasonably accessible. Um, I'm sure it will be more accessible when they're done, but it is relatively accessible now. Um, I don't know if that's your experience, and I'd love to know. I'm. Um, I'd love to know more about what you do just from the perspective of digital accessibility, because I'm blind and it matters a lot to me. Um, sure. I, well, I'll just really, really quick in summary, I, I think a, a big. Whoops. Accessibility. You, you disappeared. You froze for a moment. OK, maybe. It's now, you're back. Was, okay. now you're back. OK, I've, I've worked in higher ed for 25 years with digital accessibility, and what's really great about Title III and Section 504 is that my private colleges, maybe Title III doesn't apply, but 504 does. So that's made my job easier. Um, so I'm just saying specifically my perspective. A anyways, I think one of the biggest things to, to take away from this is that we need to make sure as we adopt new technologies, whether it's mobile apps or just new, when we contract for new technologies, that we insist on that they, they meet these new standards. So. There's things we have control over, like the web content, but then there's things we have less control over, like web apps and and different you know different products that we we purchase mm -hmm. and subs you know subscription models, et cetera. Actually, what you just said, I had forgotten about, but any third party that is contracted by the town to provide any digital materials has to provide accessible materials. That's Absolutely. part of this. And Absolutely. And so so what the what the town what the town does is one thing, but the the enforcement of the third party is going to be the interesting thing. And how do you think that that would get enforced? Well, you enforce it with the the vendor by saying you won't use their product anymore. That's been my okay. experience. Um, you know, that, but you try to work out the relationship in, in advance before you onboard a new technology where you evaluate different vendors and, and make accessibility a critical top level checkpoint before you adopt a new technology. So this is this is I, I get it for another time. We're over time. Yes, this is. Can you possibly send your contact information to Pamela Young, who is the um the town um liaison to this committee you sure. you said you live in belchertown right i do yeah okay too bad <laughs> okay <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway um but if you could send your con your contact info to pamela um that would be really great and thank you for bringing this to the committee's uh attention because i haven't and i i think it is incredibly important it's so a thank big you one. this is a big yes. 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 Thank you so much. All right. Thank, and you, thank you for sitting through our thank best you. meeting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Anything Thanks. else? Um, the next meeting, I guess, is June 4, 4 11. Um, June 11. 
and then June 14, unless we're just going to do it all on June 14. Yeah, let's do that. Just all of it on June 14. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so June 14 at the same time, 1130 to 1? Yes. Okay, all right. And Marty is unfortunately going to send her resignation to Paul. Hopefully, um, we can... Um, oh, yeah, one of the things about the commission is that we're going to have more membership. Pamela is going to be a voting member, according to the rules from the state. Um, oh. that we're, um, and so we didn't want to have fewer people. Like when Marty leaves, she could be replaced by Pamela, but then we wouldn't be able to get another architect or something. So um, we went up to nine. So if people can think of more people... That would be great because we can have up to nine members now instead of seven. Pamela will be one of them. I don't know Very if she nice. wants to vote, and she's <laughs> going to be elected secretary at the first meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but according to the state, you have to be a voting member, so I guess you'll have to be one. <laughs> <laughs> the real reason why I'm being invited to uh, join the board so that I can be <laughs> the secretary and, and make sure the minutes are done. It's definitely <laughs> one of the biggest fringe benefits. <laughs> For us, not <laughs> Pamela. <laughs> right. Oh, no, no, no. Um, okay, so anybody have any closing comments? Who's left? So we just... Have Mark. Marty, a successful uh, move, and hope she loves living in Melrose. But um, our doors are do. always open. <laughs> I already do. I have to figure out how to get on the uh, the accessibility committee in Melrose. I'm not there yet, but uh, <laughs> yeah, well, just, right. our loss is their gain for sure. I'll tell you, they've got the same problem. About <laughs> half the half of the uh, crosswalks don't work. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. Well, so Amherst isn't alone. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. I too just want to say, wish you well, and you yeah, will certainly miss you and miss yes. your expertise. And you thank well. you so much. Yeah. And I want thank to thank you. you to Minnie, because I've, I've learned a lot from you all. I wish I'd known some of these things years ago when I was practicing. Mm -hmm. So. Hmm. We're architects. You keep practicing, you get it late. right eventually. Right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And June 14th. June 14th. Okay. I'll let everyone know. Okay. All right. Thank good. you. All right. Bye, bye, nice everyone. Bye, bye. Bye, Marty. <laughs>